All right, we left off on discussing Azebo's classification of African personality theories. I am Dr. Nico Slater Sara, Dr. Mama Nico. Peace. Hey, boobs. So we stopped talking, I stopped last mini lecture talking about classification of African personality theories and going over some of the um, relatively old school theoretical perspectives. So we're gonna break down Azebo's classification of African personality theories. And he classified theories of black personality in terms of two specific criteria. One, their psychic motivational energy, which could have been either positive or negative. And two, their level of analysis, whether they emphasize individuality or collectivity. So of course you can identify based on your um, history in black psychology course and understanding of other courses, the um, emphasis on individuality or collectivity, what worldview that comes out of, though Azebo did not necessarily address that. We'll get to that later with Kambon. So he um, broke down these analysis. So essentially um, <clears throat> the idea was to take a look at whether these theorists emphasize individuality or collectivity. So remember, we're dealing with theorists, either African-American or European, who wanted to understand or classify African, understand African personality. And in their analysis of African personality, they wanted to, it's a car out here making a whole bunch of noise. It's ridiculous. So in their analysis of African personality, they wanted to um, just understand who African Americans are and where their uh, personality were rooted in. But remember, it's gonna come out of the individual or the theorist's own perspective. So some people came from more of a Eurocentric perspective, whether they were African American or European, or they came from a more um, Afrocentric perspective where they're uh, as African-Americans in terms of their analysis. So Azebo classified them on the basis of whether they employed, again, a positive or negative criteria based on, uh, as their basis of explanation of the African personality. So oftentimes, again, in the old days, African personality would be based on this uh, negative motivational theoretical perspective. So he identified um, two components, the developmental process theory that focuses on the process, the transformation of what they identify as a metamorphosis, which Africans undergo to come into their sense of blackness or black consciousness. And secondarily, the motivational product theory. And again, in Zebo's work, he identified that it focuses more on the nature and structure or organization involved in the formation of the African personality. You'll see a little challenge Later on, when we talk about coming into a sense of blackness um, by some theorists suggesting that you don't come into your blackness, you're already black, and you're either challenged by your cultural identity or not. But we'll deal with that in the next chapter, I believe. Okay, so it's important to understand that we're talking about these different theoretical perspectives, either Afrocentric or non-Afrocentric, and they either take a motivational analysis in there. Uh, we'll break down in, I believe, the next chapter, each of the theorists, which include people like Cardner and Ovesi. Um, yeah, just different theorists who are who analyze the African personality. So Kambon, in his analysis, of Azebo's work and emphasize that um, it's based, he, that Azebo did not base his work on worldview. Um, and so Kanban schematic addresses this component or this very significant part of worldview and how we must look at the world through an African worldview lens, understand that there is this um, difference between African and European worldview and how we even interpret understand um, uh, epistemological, cosmological axiology 
all of those ways in which African people come into being and personality develop comes out of worldview. So even our analysis of what that behavior is should come from a worldview perspective. And he argues that that's the correct orientation for African people. All right, so some distinguishing characteristics of non-Afrocentric theories of African personality include their reliance on the conceptual framework of the European worldview. So again, not looking at who, how African people's personality develops separate from how European people see the world. That's very, very important. Again, next unit, we'll talk about that. Um, their negative energy and their reactive motivational emphasis, which is something that Azebo broke down, their emphasis on abnormality and deficiency as a core of African personality. So again, when we deal with abnormality and deficiency as a core of African personality, we if we start there, then we are already at a loss or at a deficit. But many theorists argued or suggested that the African personality is centered around negative um, or cannot reach progress past the enslavement time period and the impact of enslavement. And again, not um, in not in chapter or this chapter nine, not in chapter ten, but chapter eleven. We break it down. I'm going in, it's about to be for it's about to be real going in. Okay, so moving on, um, some distinguishing characteristics of Afrocentric theories on African personality. And we'll dig a lot into these Afrocentric and some of the non-Afrocentric theories of personality again in the next unit. But some of them, is there some important characteristics is their reliance on African worldview as a conceptual framework for understanding African personality. So again, if we are not looking at the African from the lens of an African to understand the African personality, we are already in error. So Afrocentric theories of African personality emphasize African worldview lens to look at and interpret and understand the African personality. It also comes from a positive affirmative energy and a proactive motivational emphasis. Remember the differentiation between um, Azebo's classification. Also, the emphasis on normalcy. And again, I think in the next, next unit, not this one, but the other one, we're going to talk about um, what is psychological normalcy for African people. Uh, also, naturalness or African centered as a core of African personality functioning. And we can't emphasize this enough. So when we deal with Afrocentric personality paradigms, we provide a legitimate African cultural based conception of African personality. This Afrocentric personality paradigm also will interpret African psychological functioning and behavior from the perspective of the African worldview. Remember the worldview lens, looking at the world in the African personality from the perspective of the African worldview will help better help the African or any individual better understand who the African is. So it also draws a um, conceptual framework from the distinct history, culture, and uh, philosophy of African people, which prioritize the affirmation of African life, its cultural integrity, and its authenticity. So we're going to, again, analyze what does it mean for African people to function normal and naturally. What does normal natural functioning look like for African people? So these Afrocentric theories then will concentrate on describing and explaining the natural normal condition of African psychological functioning and behavior that is independent of European domination and control. So independent of any theories or Eurocentric perspectives. So again, I um, at, would ask if it makes black sense are you thinking with your African mind? Things like that. So we begin with a positive energy assumption, which is very different from, again, like we talked about the previous unit, the Eurocentric theoretical perspective, which started out with this pejorative um, deficit model that said African people were only uh, coming from slavery. We begin with a positive energy assumption with the basic striving of the African personality as being directed towards self-affirming, self-determination, self-fulfillment, self-actualization. Um, and we'll look at some Afrocentric personality functioning, such as the development of Afrocentric orientation that represents optimal African personality functioning. So what then is optimal functioning for the African person? What does that look like? How does it 
manifest, and then we can better analyze the deviations from optimal functioning. But first we have to understand what is optimal for the African. So that concludes this uh, mini series. I'm your professor, Dr. Nico Slater-Sara. Peace.